Good morning and welcome to another edition of your online film class. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody had a good weekend and we're ready to jump into a new form of visual entertainment. Now it's funny because when I was growing up, television was seen as a waste. Um, I remember my mother saying that it rots your brain and I never fully understood why we have this, or at least we used to have this kind of really, really bad view of television. Like it was somehow always inferior to films. Now, again, this is not something you're growing up with because you're growing up with the idea of prestige television, streaming networks that make high quality things. But, you know, back in my day, <laughs> when I was a young man, television was treated as really something less. And you were a less good actor if you were a TV actor instead of doing movies. And there was a really weird disconnect. But television really, there's no way around it, is one of the most important inventions in the history of human beings. And why do I mean that? Well, for one, and most importantly, and it's still a thing today, it gives us a much more instant way for us all to communicate. That communication can be problematic. Um, we can talk all day about news networks and how we've, we've fallen into the trap as a society of kind of watching the news we already agree with. But the, but the fact of the matter is, is we can see places we've never seen before, almost in real time, or these days in real time. We can learn about cultures, we can learn about what's going on in the world in a way much more readily available than we could when it was just radio or newsreels. And some of you should remember from film class, from the film portion of this, what a newsreel was. So television brought that to us. And yeah, a lot of it is silly. A lot of it's still silly. And we get caught up in this trap of, oh, it's somehow better now than it was 40 years ago when you had silly little game shows. But for every silly little game show like... Um, yeah, I don't know, the, the odd couple or, not the odd couple, newlywed game, I, sh I give you the real housewives or wherever. So the value of television shouldn't be whether or not we're, we see it as serious or um, like it's better now than it was then. The fact of the matter is, is that the, the, the positive implications of television have always been there and they are still there. One of the things that television did do, though, was it kind of changed our story, our story structure a bit. So we talked before that films are written in a three-act structure, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And where those breaks happen can really change depending on the writer, depending on the movie that you're telling. The three-act structure is essentially how we have taught, how we've told stories since we were sitting around campfires afraid of, like, the wind and stuff. So that part of that tradition came from oral storytelling, to novels, to movies, pretty much unchanged. With television, and in particular, in particularly broadcast television, that really changed because now we had to think about commercials. And so essentially, we write it in a five-act structure on a television show. And those breaks now are pretty regimented. You need a commercial break every six to seven minutes in a sitcom, um, a little bit longer in an hour-long drama. And for the purposes of this class, we are going to break our study of television into three main genres. We're going to look a little bit at reality, but for our purposes, reality isn't just The Bachelor or, you know, the Vanderpump Rules or whatever that nonsense is. Nonsense is. Uh, but it's also news. It's also sports. It's also game shows. Then we're going to look at sitcoms which stand for situation comedies, and then we're going to look at hour-long dramas or the hour-long format. Now, we're going to start with sitcoms, and I know we got a chance to do a little bit of this with some of y'all at the end of last semester, but sitcoms, situation comedies, generally are 30 minutes long, really about 24 minutes long when you factor in commercial breaks, and they always deal with family. Now, the obvious ones are shows like Everybody Loves Raymond, or the old show Home Improvement. Those are clearly about family. But even when they're not about family, they're about family. Yes, The Office is a sitcom, but it's still about family. 
I know that it's about a workplace, but really and truly, how often do they do entire episodes focused on the procedure of selling paper? A couple times a season. Scrubs, sitcom, about a hospital. And yes, the activities of a hospital are very, very important. But what's even more important is how that family interacts. So with sitcoms, even when we're talking about a family, it can either be blood relations or a surrogate family of some type. And so even though they might not be blood relation, you can really see the family dynamic in all of these shows. And so what I want you to do for your assignment is in the description of this video and in the MySMCA bulletin board, I'm going to list seven possible sitcoms. And I want you to look at three episodes of the same show. And then I want you to write about how it really is about family, write about the family dynamics, write about the fact that we're focused on relationships and we're not necessarily focused on jobs or tasks or objectives. That's one of the main differences. So I'm going to pick a couple of older ones if you want to look at those or some of the more modern modern shows. I'll, I'll pick some that are both on Hulu and on Netflix so you have a chance to find them. Um, so that's what I want you to do. We're going to start looking at sitcoms this week. We'll look at hour-long dramas next week. And then I have a fun option for a final project that you're going to really like.